Today, I am answering your Steelers questions here right before week two of the 2023 NFL seasons. Of course, last week, the Pittsburgh Steelers took an embarrassing loss to the San Francisco 49ers, and I want to hear your questions about it down there in the comment section. Really do appreciate all of your support. Before I answer your questions today, make sure you like today's video if you think the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to beat the Cleveland Browns at Acrisure Stadium on Monday Night Football here in week two. All right, now let's get to the questions, starting with Young Noticeable 25. It says, Omar, get the Rams on the phone. Yeah, you know, I think Omar can get the Rams on the phone all he wants. I don't think they're going to be listening, and I'm guessing this is for Aaron Donald. You know, I mean, when it comes to replacing Cam Award, I can't think of a singular player in the National Football League I'd rather replace him with than Aaron Donald. But just playing simply, I think the Rams aren't going to be trading him this early into the season. They just won their first game against the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, you know, they're looking like Matt, Matthew Stafford's back to 100% healthy. He looked great in the, in the season opener. I don't think that they want to completely derail this season right away because you can make the argument right now that Aaron Donald is not only their best defensive player, he's their only good defensive player right now. I think you can make that argument. There's a bunch of no-name players on that Rams roster defensively right now. I don't think the Rams are willing to deal right now as much as Steelers fans might want them to. Then we get GM Evan Hinders here. who says, since Deontay, Johnson hurt, since Deontay Johnson is hurt, should the Steelers uh, call Denzel Mims or bring back James Washington? I don't think so. I think they trust Calvin Austin III. He showed some good things, showed some bad things on film in week one versus the 49ers, but he's somebody that can step in for Deontay Johnson's role as kind of a get-open type of player. He runs good routes, and I really do think that he needs to take a big step up here because you drafted him for a reason. You drafted him to be a solid contributor on this team. Uh, you know, the hype has been unreal throughout this uh, training camp and uh, preseason. It's time to show up if you're Calvin Austin III. This is why you're on the team, to show up. Next man up mentality. I don't think the Steelers need to go out and get anybody else. Then we got one from Hank Topperson here. He says, would you rather replace Matt Canada with Glenn Thomas or Mike Sullivan when the, te well, when the time comes to get Canada out of here? Uh, you know, this one's tough because I'm not in the building, right? I don't know Mike or Glenn personally. Of course, Glenn Thomas, they bring in as an offensive advisor. Mike Sullivan is the quarterback's coach. Those two are the two favorites to replace Matt Canada as the offensive coordinator if they replace Canada in the coming weeks. But I'm going to go with Glenn Thomas because if I'm not mistaken, Mike Sullivan doesn't have much or any play calling experience in the National Football League. I really don't think he's called plays before, uh, college or pro. And Glenn Thomas has in college. So at least, you know, you can bring Glenn in as somebody that's called plays before. He's been in the role before. And Mike can just really focus on being with Kenny Pickett, focusing on him, focusing on making sure that he is ready to go 100% of the time. I think you bring in Glenn Thomas during the offseason for a reason. as kind of a safety blanket to, Mike, uh, to Matt Canada. So if the move is to move off of Canada, I do think that first option is probably going to be Glenn Thomas. Now let me know what you guys think about the offensive coordinator situation here in Pittsburgh by taking a guess here. What are the odds? that Matt Canada is fired before the middle of the season. Scale it on a scale of 0 to 100 for me down there in the comment section, and this is going to be the pinned comment on today's show. So I want to hear from you guys down there in the comment section when YouTube throws you, in a, it throws you an ad break right about now. All right, now let's get into Hot Rod 24's question here. He says, what's your score prediction for the game? Um, Hot Rod 24, I'm not I don't want to give away too much. You're kind of showing my hand here because I'm going to be doing my, uh, my preview for Browns versus Steelers here on the Steelers Talk Live show here in just a second. So you know what I'm going to say? If you're watching this on Saturday when this comes out, go ahead and check my preview video that's going to be coming out here in a, a couple days prior. It'll be out there on the channel. And then Hot Rod 24, you're watching this during the live show. You'll have to wait about another 20 minutes. Then we got one from DJ KJ here. He says, who do you think? We'll get in free agency until the trade uh, until the trade deadline. Uh, who do you think will get in free agency until the trade? I don't know, man. I don't think they're gonna really get anybody, especially no big name players. I think they trust their backups. You know, this is why Omar Khan built this roster with such great depth. Is because when you have injuries and they're going to come, you need to be ready for a next man up mentality. I think Omar Khan has allowed Mike Tomlin to have that kind of mentality here 
going into the 2023 season. And these guys need to step up, and I think that they are probably the best line of defense for the Steelers with these injuries. Then we got one from CM Punk here. He says, hear me out. I think AB can change if he doesn't cut, if he doesn't cut him. Give the guy one more chance. No. No. No way. No way. This guy has gotten a million chances with a bunch of different teams. This guy is so, so talented. If anybody thought there was even a shot that you could control him or you know, get him to behave even a little bit, he'd be on, he'd be on an NFL team, plain and simply. He, I think his, his, his bridge to the NFL has been completely burnt to the ground. And listen, man, I know that it's, it's, it's kind of like a nice thought. Oh, George Pickens and Antonio Brown on the field at the same time. Wow, but here's some things to consider. We don't know if Antonio Brown is really in shape to play on an NFL field. Number two, we don't know what he's going to be able to do in terms of his behavior. It's just not a good idea, CM Punk. I really don't think Antonio Brown is a viable option. Then we got one from D's here, and he says, which guys do you see uh, stepping up on offense with Deontay Johnson out the next couple of weeks? So I see Calvin Austin III, as somebody that's going to be coming up to play the Z position, uh, kind of where Deontay Johnson plays. George Pickens is the true X. And then Allen Robinson is usually playing in the slot. And, you know, so is Calvin Austin the third. But I think that Calvin's ability to separate, to be a deep threat, to get open, uh, you know, and, and really run good routes. I think that benefits Calvin Austin the third's ability to play on the outside. I think that's where he's going to be playing a lot this weekend. I guess we'll see what Matt Canada and the Steelers offensive uh, coaching staff kind of plan out for this week versus the Browns. But I think that Calvin Austin III, Allen Robinson, and George Pickens all have a great opportunity to step up their game here and really uh, show this team their worth when Deontay Johnson is out of the lineup. Now, coming up here, some more Steelers questions for you guys uh, that I want to answer here on the Steelers Talk mailbag for this week. But before we get into that, let's have a word from our sponsor at AG1. And I drink AG1 literally every day, guys, and I love it. Get comprehensive and convenient daily nutrition at drinkag1.com slash chat sports. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted more sustained energy throughout my day and wanted a supplement that actually tastes good. Great. Now, here are some of the benefits of using AG1 every single day. It promotes your gut health. It supports your immunity so you get sick less often, and it boosts your focus and energy. So if you have a job like mine that requires all of your focus at every moment of the day, you're going to be covered with AG1. I have AG1 in the morning, and it makes me feel ready to take on my day every day. AG1 combines all of your key health products in one convenient and tasty beverage. And in my line of work, guys, sometimes you have to put in those long hours, especially during football season. So AG1 helps me feel energized and sharp so I can be at my best no matter how busy my schedule gets. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust AG1. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with 12 ounces of water and drink it first thing each morning when I get out of bed. Done, simple, easy, don't have to worry about it for the rest of the day. I also like that it costs less than $3 a day, which is definitely less than the Starbucks you're drinking every single morning. It's a really effective uh, daily habit with the highest quality source ingredients, which is a win-win for you and your health. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplemental routine, then AG1 is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash chat sports. That's drinkag1.com slash chat sports. Check it out. The links are in the comments and the description of today's video. All right, let's get to some more Steelers questions here on this week's mailbag. This one comes in from Satchel McKee who says, is Ter Terrell Austin just in much trouble as Matt Canada, seeing how the defense didn't perform well either Sunday? So Satchel, I think it depends on how the defense plays for the rest of the season. I already see a bunch of people on Steelers Twitter saying, we should have kept Brian Flores and fired, fired Terrell Austin. Here's the thing, though. Like the last stretch of games there uh, for the Pittsburgh Steelers, you go 7-2, and two, and that is in large part because Terrell Austin's defense was among the top three, if not the best, in the National Football League. You're not going to fire a defensive coordinator that just had that kind of run. All right, maybe Matt Canada, you know, the offense was still struggling a little bit during that 7-2 and two stretch. It would have made sense to fire Matt Canada at that point, but not Terrell Austin, who was leading one of the best defensive units 
in the National Football League over the second half of the, of the season there in 2022. I still believe in Tara Lawson. I still believe in Mike Tomlin. I just believe that, you know, this is, there's some new pieces here that need to get a little bit better. There are some missed opportunities on defense. But overall, I still think that they're very solid. And at the end of the day, I still view them as a top 10 defense. Then we got another one here from, is this the next one, Coop? Yeah. Joel L. Okay, so he says, do you think? Oh, rotated. Okay, so, so Joel L says, do you think Terrell Austin also be on the hot? I do believe the Steelers' defense gave up scores on their first three drives against the 49ers. That is, I mean, yes, it was not a good game on either side of the football, right? I'm not going to say that it was, all right? But you got somebody in Terrell Austin that was the defensive coordinator on what I think was the best defense in football in the second half of the season. I still think, I'm still a big believer in him. Now, if this continues throughout the season, then we'll have a different discussion, but I think it's a little bit too early to talk about firing Terrell Austin. Then we got one from Wide Open Arms here. It says, if Pickett stinks again this week, will it be time to lose hope in the kid? Uh, you know, maybe not this week, but, you, you know, the Browns' defense is really good, all right? They're going to be very aggressive. They got some really good pass rushers in Miles Garrett and Zadarius Smith. They got good linebackers. They got talent everywhere on that defense, all right? I don't like the Browns. I think they're a trash organization, but they've got some talent, and uh, their defensive coordinator, Schultz, he, he can coach a little bit. So I think that it's going to be a tough test for the Pittsburgh Steelers here on Monday night football. But, you know, like I said with Kenny Pickett before, it was a bad game week one. If he has a bad game this week, I think it's panic time probably. But am I losing all hope in him? No. I think by week four, if he sucks, then maybe the hope will, get, will, will be lost. But, you know, going up against really, two really tough defenses to start the season, uh, if he stinks again this week, it'll be like, dang, he probably can't play really good against good defenses, uh, which it definitely isn't good. But, you know, it's definitely something where I'm waiting and seeing about Kenny Pickett. I want him to prove it this year. He hasn't done it to this point. Hopefully he does in the weeks to come. Now fill in the blank for me down there in the comments section. Kenny Pickett is a top blank quarterback in the National Football League right now. Answer this question down there in the comments section. I can't wait to see how you're feeling about the Steelers, QB1. Then we got one from Joel Bradley here. He says, Mike Tomlin and the boys have a history of getting off to a slow start in September. Who is the blame? I think, you know, right now, who's to blame for the first week? Everybody's to blame, right? The defense is to blame. Mike Tomlin is to blame. Mike, Matt Canada's play calling was awful. Kenny Pickett had multiple wide misses to, wide, to open receivers. Like, everybody deserves a share of the blame. Now, if this thing continues throughout the season, more blame is going to get shared among this group. But, you know, when I look at what Mike Tomlin's been able to do throughout his career here in Pittsburgh, uh, you know, I think that, you know, I actually disagree with the idea uh, that he's gotten off to slow starts in September. Yes, last year it was a pretty slow start, but he didn't have T.J. Watt for most of those games. And the one game he did have T.J. Watt in September for, you beat the freaking Bengals, okay? So, I th and then, you know, of course, a couple of years ago, they started that incredible stretch. I think it was 11-0 and 0 to start the season. So I think Mike Tomlin does a pretty darn good job at starting seasons off right. Uh, you know, there's definitely exceptions to that, but I certainly don't think he's bad at starting seasons off on the right foot. Uh, and then Matt Canada, obviously, he's had a history of failure in this league. He needs to get better. Kenny Pickett still hasn't proven himself. He needs to get better. When, but when it comes to Mike Tomlin, I think he's got a pretty proven track record at this point. Then we got one from Jay here who says, why did Desmond King not play against the 49ers? He will be in for the Browns. He didn't play in week one because I, I'm guessing Mike Tomlin didn't feel like he was ready. He didn't have enough practice time. He didn't know the playbook enough. There's a bunch of different reasons why the Steelers wouldn't play him in week one. Like you said, he will be on the field for this Browns game. Will he start over Chandon Sullivan? I guess we'll see on that front. I certainly, I certainly think he has a shot to play quite a bit. I'm definitely going to be watching Desmond King very closely in this Monday night matchup. And hopefully it gives the Steelers defense a spark. Now, that'll be it for me today, guys. Really do appreciate all of the support. Make sure you join the family today and join the most interactive Steelers YouTube community here on the platform 100% free. We try to keep you guys involved in the dialogue here in Steelers Nation with these weekly mailbags. We got live shows on Wednesdays and on game days for our live watch party. So if you want to join the most interactive Steelers community on YouTube, do me a favor, click that subscribe button right now.